Hello, this is Michael Trayvins RV Center here to congratulate you on your Flagstaff Microlate 22 FBS travel trailer. I'm here to walk you around it, show you how to use a few things to get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite, a few things to take into consideration when parking. On your campsite, I want you to leave plenty of room for this awning to come in and out. On your off campsite, you have a slide, but I also want you to think about where your power and water connections are going to be. On your unit, all the way at the rear on your off camp side, or your driver's side of your tow vehicle, is where your power and water connections are going to be. So park your car at least so you can utilize the facilities at the campsite. Once you arrive, unhook our hitch. First thing we want to do is level our unit. The unit comes with a power tongue jack. Simply up for up, down for down. Now, should you lose power underneath this little rubber stopper right here, it is all set up for a hand crank. Oh, we got on the other side. This smaller hand crank here will fit right down in here and get this up and down, even if you don't have power. Uh, you also have a night docking light should you arrive at night. And speaking of power, check your battery post every now and then. Make sure those have a wiggle loose coming down the road over time. Once we got our unit level, next thing we're going to do is stabilize it. Also in here, these are really nice, these magnet holders for your hand cranks. Also in here, here's your three quarter inch hand crank. Come to the stabilizing jacks. You're set pretty low, so I wouldn't worry about using an impact driver or a drill gun. But I would use stabilizing jack pads. Jack pads are going to protect the feet of these from dirt, debris, hot black top. Uh, just going to add to the longevity of the life of these. They come down pretty quick. Run these down just until these are taut. Remember, we've already got our unit level. So we're going to put down our jack pads. Run these down to about five or six cranks on, down to your pads. Just until... You've got some resistance on your hand crank. Remember, our unit's already level. We just want to stabilize it. So we get all four of them down. Got a unit level and stable. We'll go hook up your power and water. Come around to the back here. You got a 30 foot, 30 amp cord. The way they come in, comes in at about 11 o'clock there. Turn it to the right and that'll lock you in. And then put your black washer on there. At the end of this 30 amp service, should you need to plug into a 110, will be a 30 to 15 adapter in your convenience pack. Catch your power plugged in, let's hook up our water. Just above your power is going to be your docking station. At campsites, we're going to hook up to city water connection. First and foremost, a water pressure regulator. Uh, you don't know what the water pressure is at different campsites, so always use these. This will reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 psi, protecting the lines in your unit. I always use these. Hook that up, hook up your hose, but don't turn your hose on yet. One more step. Just to the left of this is gonna be your hot water heater. All we're doing at that point, throw some plumber's tape around there and put your rod and plug back in there. Get that in there nice and snug. Once that's in there tight, you can go ahead and turn that hose on. Our next step is go in and open up this slide. Step it up in your unit. To our right is our control panel. And here's our slide out. So we're gonna push out, open that up. I'm gonna open up this slide so that I can get to all of my water lines. We're gonna open up these water lines, get all the air out of the lines, get a nice steady flow of water going through them here as well as in the bathroom. Then shut them off. Make sure it slides all the way up. Shut them off. You're all set to camp at the campsite. Now, if we're going to boondock or dry camp, in that case, we got a two step process to go through. We're going to start up here to uh, where our, at the front of our off campsite or driver's side of your tow vehicle to our potable water tank. No need for a water pressure regulator here. Simply gravity fill this with a hose. There's two ways to tell it's full. One, there's an overflow valve right here. Or two on the inside where you check the levels of your black and gray tanks. Um, 
there's also a button for your fresh water so keep an eye on that don't leave that unattended while you're filling it uh, also make sure your other step is to make sure that your hot water heater is plugged up as well once that's full remove your hose put that cap back in and then whenever you want to utilize this water you'll turn on your water pump indoors don't turn on your water pump when hooked up to the city water that is already pressurized all right we're already cap power and water let me walk you around the rest of the unit continuing here on your off camp side switch for docking light right there in the front this is a magnet to hold your door open or your pass-through storage here in your storage will be a big table an outdoor table and your griddle over there here again is your um, fresh water there's your torque positions for your tiring auto leveling system your fresh water drain is right there that boondocking fresh water tank will dump coming down your off camp side they've got on your slide, I want to mention on these seals, they've got a liquid that you can spray on these to keep them nice and pliable, keep them from dry, dry rotting over the years. Again, your hot water heater. Uh, one thing, if your hot water heater doesn't seem to be working, come out here and look to see if either one of these are bubbled up. If they are, simply press them back in. Docking station has cable, satellite, tank flush. We'll talk about that when leaving the campsite and dumping our black tanks. City water and your antifreeze inlet for winterizing the unit. Power, and there's our black and gray tanks. Come around to the back of the unit. You got an outdoor shower. You're prepped for a backup camera. You have a cover for your spare tire. Great idea, keeps that from dry rotting over the years. If you got a ladder utilize it go up there check the seams of your roof and caulk as needed with recommended rv roofing caulk on your campsite you've got an awning with pitch control pull down on that and that'll run all the rainwater to one way you can do that from either end get a porch light and our low point drains you learn these there and let's find those right here in the corner That sticker probably go right there. Got a couple outdoor speakers, a vent for your microwave. This will hold your door open by snatching it in there. Blue for your furnace, couple things on that. One, make sure it's never blocked. Two, if you are running your furnace, steer clear of that. It does get hot. They do make bug covers for those as well. A screen you can put on those. Prep for TV, they got a backer that'll slide right down onto this. 110 and cable hookup and then LP quick connect right there Here is your rail for your griddle the legs and the table will all fit on this in here for your stabilizing jacks and power tongue jack crank Here's your sewage hose your elite griddle your prep for solar you plug in a solar panel right here and that'll trickle charge your batteries. The propane does come with a cover. It is on a regulator. Again, Lefty Lucy. We got these new tougher built covers here. The older ones were a little flimsier. These are nice. Regulator simply pointed toward the tank you wish to be using. Uh, green means you've got gas. Again, Lefty Lucy to open these up. And lastly, down underneath your propane will be your battery disconnect. This will disconnect all the battery power to your unit. That'll come important later when I talk about your carbon dioxide and propane detector. All right, covers everything out here. Go take a look on the inside. Coming up inside the unit, first thing I always like to point out your fire extinguisher. Make sure that you and everyone is camping with you knows your fire extinguisher is located at the entry doorway. There are some ins instructions from your TPM tire pressure monitoring system, TPMS system. Uh, you can scan that and tell you about it, or you can watch the video I'm going to send along with this unit. Coming up top, Go Power Solar Controller. 
Um, the only concern with this, you just want to make sure your battery stays on wet. I'll send you a separate video from them. Awnings and slide outs can all be done from this app. Here's Wi Fi Ranger info. Another video coming from that, how to set that up as well. Just some things right from the manufacturer so you understand everything good. Down here is our control panel. Here you can see our tanks, our fresh tank, our black tank, and our gray tank. The fresh ones I say to watch as you're filling it. Over here shows your battery. Good. Uh, awning step, interior, and bedroom lights. Here's where you can connect to the Bluetooth. Here's your Wi-Fi booster, which has to do with that Wi-Fi ranger here, turn, turning that on and off. Here's where you turn on your water heater. You hook the gas, your water heater hooked to electric. Over here, uh, your water pump, if you're using your potable, potable water. And then this tank heater is just a 12 volt pad that's on your tanks. If you're in inclement weather, you can turn that on to keep them from freezing. Awning control, slide control. On your awning. You only want to run that awning out until you can see your brown bar and that flap has fall down to 90 degrees. If I hold that down, that will continue to run itself out and start to run itself up backwards. Uh, so it's not a care for the awning where it stops by itself. Keep an eye on it when you run it out and make sure you don't run it out further than you need to. Run that back in. And tell you one thing about these doors, slam locks should be gently slammed to work well. Continuing our unit, one touch lighting above your sink. Speaking of sinks, behind these drawers, you got access to your plumbing. Keep an eye on your plumbing, make sure nothing, nothing has wiggled loose over time. A little cleaning, scrubby area. Drawers, a pop up power port. USB and 110s that you can hide away. Self explanatory microwave. Light and fan above your cooktop. This glass top makes an excellent backsplash. Turn on your panel light, turn that to light, hit your spark, and there it goes. All three of those light the same way, as well as your oven. Turn this to the flame, hit your spark here, that will light your pilot. Then turn it to the desired temperature. You can rock that panel light down, and that'll give you an oven light. Make sure you have this glass down for travel. Here's your Connex TV. That's your ETV sound system. Separate manual in there from the uh, Connex on this remote. But you can run separate indoors and outdoors. Show you real quickly here. We'll be on the red side here. Source, there's our music. You could also have media, TV, component HDMIs, Bluetooth hookup. And we go to the TV here. Speaking of TV, when you arrive at the campsites, go into your menu, run a, a digital channel scan to pick up all of your channels. And that'll help you to pick up all your local channels. Also, a remote for your fireplace. Which is down here not just for looks folks um i can make it brighter or dimmer but the biggest thing now is the heat if you're plugged into a campsite instead of using up your gas crank up this uh electric fireplace heater and it'll get it toasty in here in no time a couple of one tens up by our bedding we do have a vent here that we can just open up by hand Storage under your bed with this handle. Charging port. Accent lighting. There's your inverter. Turn that on if you want to turn your 12 volt into 110 for very short periods of time. So you're boondocking and need to turn on uh, your microwave for a moment. Use it sparingly because it drains your tires or your batteries, excuse me. Drains your batteries. This charging port, 110, will store away. Easy pull recliners, just pull up on the handle. One ten there. Crank up your AC. Show you these have a AC quick dump. 
blast out the cold air. Shut that off. Turn the heat on. Heat back off. You'll notice when you do the heat, it takes a few minutes for the for the furnace to cycle through before it actually shuts off. Uh, coming over here to your fridge. The Magic Chef is all electric like fridge now. Controls are up there. This is a safety latch so that that won't bounce open while you're traveling. Down below your fridge is your breaker box and fuse. There's a ton of 15s in there, a 20, a 30, a couple 40s. Highly recommend having a handful of those with you when you go camping. To the right of that, 12 volt carbon oxide propane detector. Now the reason I mention that's 12 volt, it's always running off your batteries. So if you are out dry camping, boondocking somewhere, nothing plugged in charge to your batteries, you're going to be gone for the day and you don't want this to run your batteries down, use that battery disconnect right up underneath your propane tanks and that'll keep that from doing that to you. Coming in our bathroom, um, our lighting's here, 110 with GFCI reset, more plumbing to maintain, a shower that you want to have latched closed for travel, keep those glass doors from bouncing around on you. And you have your max air vent up here, or not max air vent, but your hand crank open, four speed vent up here. Exhaust. All right, that about covers everything in here. Let's act like we're leaving the campsite and close the unit up. I like to start by shutting off my main lights. From, then I can look around and see any accent lighting I need to shut off. All my accent lighting's off, bathroom lighting's off. Turn back on my interior. I love that this is lit, lit up in, when you come back here in the dark. Now I'm gonna say doors and drawers. Walk through the unit, close all doors and drawers, make sure nothing's gonna impede your slide from coming in. We're gonna hit slide in. you hear this noise at the end you'll hear it going in or out it's just a slide mechanism saying I'm in all the way time to let your finger off the handle shut your interior lights off and exit the unit have to bring the, my awning rest way back in here uh, one thing on these steps the most important thing is your exterior door has to be all the way in or or excuse me all the way open otherwise this will catch on as it's coming up you also have adjustable feet simply press in on this button and these feet can be brought up and down so how close that comes put that inside before you leave the dump station lock and deadbolt this door lift and turn this handle i say before you leave the dump station in case you decide go inside and watch the levels of your tanks as you're dumping them all right if we're out boondocking dry camping we're gonna come over here get underneath there and dump our fresh water drain empty that all out bring up our stabilizing jacks and either head to the closest dump station or to uh home if we are at a campsite we're gonna unhook our power our water our cable we're going to bring up our stabilizing jacks, hook up our hitch, and head on up to the dump station. Now, at the dump station, park accordingly. Your dump is going to be right behind your tires on your off-camp side. 10-foot hose comes to your convenience pack. Hook that up and pull your black handle. That's going to be the one on the right. You're always going to be able to remember it because it's the bigger one. Once you open that up, let that go for a few until it sounds like it's no longer draining. Go inside, check the level of your black tank, come out here, grab the hose at your dump station, and hook it up to this tank flush. Emphasizing, leave that black handle open, turn that hose on and let it run for a good five minutes. It's going to wash all that nastiness out of your black tank. When that's done, remove that hose, make sure all that washout water you just put in there has drained out. When that's empty, close that black handle and pull that gray handle. 
usually while my gray tanks are dumping i'll come around here and dump my low point drains there's gonna be right up underneath this corner once you get done dumping those if you're done camping for the season let's go to our hot water heater or even if it's going to be a while before you camp again don't want to leave stagnant water in here begin by lifting up on this pressure release valve you can dump hot water out of there so be careful when it's done push that back down otherwise your door won't close then you can pull this drain again a little bit more residual hot water going to come out of there and then we're all done put your caps back on your low point drains your gray is done close your gray and it's going to be cleaner water it's your sinks and your showers so that's going to clean your sewage hose out for you a little bit and then conveniently and sanitarily store your sewage hose or stinky slinky as we like to call it right here in your bumper and head on home again thank you guys so much for your purchase hope you enjoy this micro light for many years to come happy camping